Hello friends, welcome back to part 7 of my 2022 Q3 Tesla forecast review video series. Let's get right back to it and pick up where we left off with this slide, which was the, uh, the one we looked at in part 6. This is the only slide we got to in part 6 because it took a while for me to explain what this chart is really telling us which is how Tesla went from being just another low-volume, low-profit luxury vehicle manufacturer to a cash printing machine uh, with not only volumes increasing over time to become a high-volume uh, world leader in luxury vehicle sales uh, by units, but also uh, gross margins, uh, world-class uh, industry-leading gross margins and rising revenue per vehicle sold. That is really tricky to do. So um, that's what that chart said. The next chart that I have for you, I gave a makeover in this most recent forecast, trying to make this easier to understand what's going on, because there is a lot here. The easiest place to start on this chart is the line. Uh, this had previously been shown as an area or a mountain range, like the previous chart, but I changed it to a line. It's just the cash deliveries. So this is very similar to what we've seen already with deliveries charts, uh, except this one excludes leased vehicles. Throw those out, pretend that Tesla doesn't lease vehicles. What if all Tesla did was cash deliveries? That's what this would look like. Then for the bars, those are labeled on the y-axis at the left, amount per cash delivery. Okay, so the red bars are giving you ASP, average selling price, excluding leasing and credits. What's that mean? Again, it's making the assumption that Tesla doesn't do any leasing, Tesla doesn't sell any regulatory credits. What would Tesla's business look like if those things did not exist. If those weren't part of the business, let's throw them out and look at just the deliveries to people who are paying cash to buy and own Teslas. What does that look like? Well, back in Q1 of 2018, that revenue per cash delivery was very high at 93400 and it's been lower every quarter since because the Model 3 has been ramping up in sales over that period of time, becoming a larger and larger portion of Tesla's total sales mix and driving down the average selling price per cash delivery uh, since then. The cost per vehicle has also been coming down, which is a very good thing if you want to have any gross margin left over. Now, in, in the legend here, you don't see gross margin called out anywhere, but it's here if you look for it. It's the portion of the red bar that's above the black bar. So, in the case of this first uh, quarter here of 2018, 93400 was the revenue per vehicle on average uh, per cash delivery. 78700 was the cost of sales per cash delivery. So the difference between these, uh, so nearly $15,000 in this little rectangle here, that's the gross margin per vehicle delivered. So you can see that number has hopped around some over the years. With the low point coming in Q1 of 2019 when Tesla had some pretty spectacular uh, logistical challenges trying to deliver the first batch of Model 3s to Europe and uh, not getting those delivered to their owners uh, in this quarter as planned. So um, really poor gross margin there. Less than, uh, than $8,000 per vehicle worth of gross margin. That is a small shovel. Uh, and what I mean when I say that is the gross margin is the size of the shovel. How quickly you can fill in a hole uh, is greatly expedited by the size of your shovel. If your shovel's too small, it's going to take you a long time and a lot of effort to fill in a hole. If your uh, shovel is a lot bigger, you need to, you know, pitch uh, a lot f uh, fewer uh, shovel shovels full of dirt to fill that hole back in. 
So as time has progressed, Tesla's gross margin has improved considerably. Look at Q1 of 2022, so 52,000 ASP, lower than some of these years, but uh, quarters back in 2019. Uh, 36,600 uh, cost of sales here, so that's pretty good. Uh, it's better than uh, 15,000 by a little bit. It's hard to do that when your sale price uh, has come down by a lot to keep driving down the cost per vehicle. Normally you see the cost per vehicle rise over time, and if you did the same exercise for other automakers, you would see a lot of them uh, have their cost per vehicle rising over time uh, in terms of cost of sales, uh, the direct costs associated with manufacturing a vehicle. And uh, in Q2, it rose quite a lot because of the Shanghai lockdowns. What do I mean here? The Fremont factory is Tesla's least profitable factory. It is hard to make a lot of money producing cars in California because the costs are higher than average for factories worldwide. Uh, it is a lot less expensive to manufacture cars in Shanghai than it is to manufacture in the Bay Area of California. So when the Shanghai lockdowns happened and Shanghai became less of Tesla's mix, um, the average cost per vehicle delivered rose. So what do I have in for Q3 and Q4? I've got an expectation. <laughs> I promise I did not just type these in uh, to, to make a joke, a 420 joke. Uh, I do a very detailed buildup of uh, cost uh, per, per model produced by site, by option config type using take rates and costs per option. So uh, I model all of that and I model for cost pressures. So we've been in a very inflationary period recently and uh, those are creating some headwinds for companies worldwide, Tesla being one of them. So I have taken to heart the cautions that we heard from Zach in the earnings calls about costs continuing to rise this year, and those are reflected in my forecast. Even though more of the production should be coming from Shanghai, we're also trying to ramp up Austin and Berlin, and those are not uh, very far past their break-even volume yet, for sure. Uh, so expect these uh, costs to improve as time goes by. But look at the, the ASP columns, though. These red bars are rising, rising, rising throughout this year because Tesla's price increases, uh, which have been announced over the past, you know, uh, six to eight months, don't go into effect right away. Tesla has a very long backlog of orders to fill, so there's a long delay between when those price increases are announced and when you start to see them reflected in the income statement as Tesla reports it. So uh, expect to see average revenue per cash delivery continue to rise over time. All right, that's all I wanted to say about this chart, I think. So I will say that's all for part seven, and I will catch you in part eight.